And so I want to share a scripture with you in Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 22. And again, we're talking about saints, God fighting our battles. We're talking about God going before and rebuking the enemy. God going before and destroying that cycle of defeat. And God saying it's through his word that he's going to do these things. Amen. This is God's promise to us. And 2 Samuel chapter chapter 20 through 22, let's, let's start in verse 14. It says, the Lord thundered from heaven and the most high utters his voice. He sent out arrows and scattered them. Now, when he's talking about them, he's talking about the enemy saints. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning bolts, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were, were seen. The foundations of the world were uncovered at the rebuke of the Lord. At the blast of the breath of his nostrils, he sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy and those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted, they confronted me in the days of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Hallelujah. And so, saints, I want to encourage you. When God says that, it talks about that strong enemy. Now, come on, this cycle that keeps coming around, and, and we just can't seem to get loosed of it. We just can't seem to stop that cycle from coming around. God says he's going to deliver us from our strong enemy. And that word calamity means distress. You know, sometimes it's really a distress in our lives that these things happen because we know who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. But God wants you to know, saints, and you need to know this right away. It's even before you are born again, but much more when you're born again, God delights in you. God delights in you. And those of you on live stream, if there's someone that's hearing it for the first time and you're not, a, you're not born again, you need to know that God says he delights in you. He loves you. And he wants you to know that. You don't have to do anything to earn his love. He delights in you, saints. And so God wants us to know that this, this, this word cycle means a series of occurrence that repeat or is repeated. Amen? Now, come on. I'm going to raise my hand because I know. I, I, I know about this stuff. All of us know about this stuff. Amen? And so it's a, a cycle is a series of occurrences that repeat or is repeated. A cy the, the cycle in our minds God is dealing with today. The things in our mind, amen. The cycle of defeat will try to tempt us. And if the cycle of, the tr the cycle of defeat will try to tempt us and, to, and for us to yield to it, amen. It will try to get us to yield to that. It will come and it will try to get yield to that. We're going to see in the word of God how Jesus himself defeated that. And we need to use the word of God to defeat any time the enemy comes with a temptation or with something in our mind that we're not, uh, we don't belong to God or God's not going to fulfill his word in our lives or that God has been lying to us. The devil's the liar and the father lies. Amen. The Bible says when we spoke about it last week that there's no temptation that comes to you that God will not a way of make of God will not make a way of escape. This is your way of escape right here. You want to escape from temptation? You want to escape from the lies and deceits of the enemy that comes against your mind and tries to tell you you're not who you are? This is the only thing that's going to do it. Jesus said, I already did it. I already given you life abundantly. I already given you everything. In my name, Jesus said. In my name, Jesus said. In my name, Jesus said. I use Jesus' name more than I use anything else because he says in his name, that's when things happen. You want something to happen, it's going to happen in the name of Jesus. And the only reason it's going to happen like that is because that's what the word of God says. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Amen. The word became flesh and dwelt where? It dwelt in us. So now the great I am dwells within us. He says, I've given you my name. I've given you my authority. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you need deliverance from, right? Whatever we need deliverance from, come on. Attitudes, come on. I, I, I'm going to raise my hand because, I, you know, I, I want God to do it. Even if I don't think I have it, I'm going to ask him to do it anyway because I might have it and not know I have it. Amen. And I don't want to wait till I see it to say, oh, great, Lord, take it. I'm going to tell him now. Take it now, God. Take everything. I don't, I'm going to say, God, I don't even want to see it. Just take it. Just take it. Because there's some things we don't want to see. 
You know, we say, Lord, show me what's wrong with me. I don't want God to show me what's wrong with me. I said, Lord, I, I want to see you like, I want to see me like you see me, God. Because then I'm going to want to get up in the morning. I'm going to want to praise him because I'll see him like I. And so the things that aren't of him, I just want him to take it away. You know, but I always know that greater is he that's in me than he's that's in the world. Like David's, like David spoke in Psalm 51, he goes, Lord, show me, you know, forgive me and, and strengthen me so that I can go and strengthen others, so that I can go and, and, and tell others about you, you know. And, and so, again, saints, this is, we're in a time right now, as, as Apostle Michael was uh, speaking, we're in a time now where God wants to start using all that stuff that he's invested yeah. into us. Yeah. I mean, there is such prophecy in many of you. That you may have given a little while, but God says, I have a lot more. Because the more you give out, the more prophecy he gives you. Why would he give you prophecy if you're not going to use it? Once you use it, literally says, once you use the prophecy God gives you, it activates the other prophecy to come. But if you don't use it, the other prophecy sitting there waiting. I got it. I'm number two, so, you know, they haven't used number one yet. So if they use no more, then I'm coming in there. And so, again, we don't want to delay the prophecy. When God gives you a prophetic word. And, 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 and you want to release it, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and release it. Lord, you said that you were going to give me a husband. Lord, you said you were going to give me a new job. Lord, you prophesied over me that me and my household are going to serve you, Lord. That's what I received. And then God says, yes. And then another prophetic word comes. And another prophetic. You know, the, you know what a prophetic word is? A prophetic, a prophetic word is God speaking through you. It's speaking through you to, to, to warn, to encourage to lift up, and then and then you got this. You got the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, all these things that, uh, to speak the word of God out. And when you speak the word of God, things come. So that's those things are in you, my brothers and sisters. Those of you online and those of you sitting, God is. In, there's stuff in you. Come on, speak it out. There's no greater way. You're have. You're gonna with it before this fast is over. You're gonna have two opportunities to do that. You're gonna have one opportunity on Friday when we're all sitting here live. Those of you that come into the sanctuary, and then when Apostle Michael was talking about on this Zoom meeting this week, you will have the opportunity to guess what? Thus saith the Lord, I have a word from God in the name of Jesus. So this way you. You can't say, Lord, I want to be used by you. Some of us think you have to be behind a pulpit to be used by God. You just have to speak the word. The centurion told Jesus, Jesus, just speak the word. If you speak it, I know it's going to come to pass. So where is he dwelling now? He's dwelling within us. And guess where we're dwelling? Seated with him on the right side, of, on his right-hand side. So when we speak, we got two places to speak for. We can speak from heaven and we can speak from earth. We got both areas covered. That's why God says, I have your front and rear guard. He has us covered all the time. And so all we have to do to see things change, all we have to do to break this cycle is speak the word of God. And when we speak the word of God, guess who, guess who fulfills it? God fulfills it. He said, I watch over my word to perform, but we need to speak it. Amen. And so today, we're gonna, we're, as God gives you these words, you need to speak them out because it's going to kind of pass. It's already in you. It's already in you. And so we're going to see one of the one of the temptations that the enemy has has tried uh, um, of this cycle, and we're going to see how Jesus defeated it. Amen. It's in Luke, cha uh, the fourth chapter of Luke. You know the story, the wilderness. Amen. When Jesus went into the wilderness, it said the enemy came and tempted him. Well, in verse one, it says, "Then Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit." Verse two said that that he was tempted in the wilderness, and you know the story. Verse three, G the devil comes in and goes, "Look, if you are the Son of God." Turn this stone into bread, right? And Jesus, what did Jesus do? He used the word of God and he says, it is written. I'm only going to say what Jesus says. He says, it is written, amen? And so then the devil goes on to say, hey, look, if you worship me, I'll give you this kingdom and all you see. And Jesus goes, no, he goes, because uh, the only thing, only one that worships is we worship God, amen? So he goes in verse 8, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, Amen. How many of us know that we need to resist the enemy and he will flee? Saints, he doesn't hear you. He hears Jesus. The same Jesus, because see, Jesus was in the flesh, right? So if you're in the flesh, you have a voice, right? And your voice makes a sound, right? And so he was here in the flesh. And so he went through the wilderness in the flesh. 
And so he spoke in the flesh, and, Jesus, and the enemy heard his voice, his earthly voice. So now when he speaks through us, that's who the enemy hears. He hears the voice of Jesus. But how much more now greater that he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Power, all power over all authority, all power all of authority. And so he's speaking the word, and the enemy must bow. Did you know that the angels that... that that rebelled against Jesus, even Satan himself that rebelled against Jesus, they were created to bow to Jesus. That's how they, they were created to bow before him. And so that's what they were created to do. So whatever you created to do, that's what you got to do. You were created to serve God. And so that's why when you start serving God, that it's easy to serve God because you're serving him. That's what you were created to do. Well, these, these angels, these so-called fallen angels who rebelled against God, when they hear the name that is above every name, guess what they have to do? They have to bow. That's what they were created to do. They can't resist it. They cannot resist God because this was the Spirit of God who created them. So they have to bow. Just like you're on this earth, saints, you were, when you were born, when God breathed breath onto you and you were made a physical being, we have to breathe, right? We have to breathe. We have to take a breath of oxygen to breathe. We can't hold our breath. We cannot hold our breath. Because we were created to breathe. So we have to breathe. They have to bow. So when you say the name of Jesus, the enemy has to bow. Don't, don't ever think, well, he ain't bound. Yes, he is. He's bound because he heard the name of Jesus. So it says in verse 8, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So today I prophesy to you by the Spirit of God, and God is saying this to you right now. Those of you that are here and those of you online. This is what God is saying to you. You shall serve the Lord your God. And him only shall you serve. No other gods. That cycle is being broken. You're not going to serve that cycle anymore. You're not going to say, oh, well, summertime's coming. I better get ready. Because, you know, usually things happen that are not good for me in summertime. I got to put all this stuff on me because I always get burned in summertime. No, you're not going to get burned in summertime. Because God says when the heat comes, it will not touch you. This is what God is great. I mean, if you want to put it on, go ahead. But don't be afraid that if you don't put it on, something's going to happen. Because God will watch over you, saints. A cycle is something that occurs, that repeats itself. A cycle also means event. An event is an episode. And an episode is an experience. And an experience is a struggle, saints. There, these cycles in your lives are about to be removed. No more struggles. No more occurrences. No more episodes, saints. No more episodes. Remember Luke chapter 4, verse 13. Remember? Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Now that sounds like he left him, but like he's coming around again. Another translation says, until the next time opportunity came. And another translation says, for another season. So we know that this cycle is a seasonal thing. It's an opportunity that Satan uses to come against our lives. But God says, you're going to be on the guard when? In season and out of season. In the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Behold, I dance. From the morning to the, to the, to the afternoon to the evening, you're going to be on the guard. When those cycles try to come, you're going to say, no, they're not going to come anymore because God has given me a cycle of victory. And so God wants us to know until the next opportune time or for a season, there are cycles in our lives, seasons, when the enemy will try to tempt us. Amen. We've all experienced that, saints. We've all experienced that. And, and I'm going to say this because it's true. And sometimes he succeeds. He does. And we kick ourselves for it. And we beat ourselves for it. But we don't say, Lord, forgive me, I repent. And when we do that, when we say, Lord, forgive me, I repent, then God, what does he do? He picks us up again. He goes, okay, go. Keep going. Don't ever stop, saints. Don't ever stop and say, you know what? God told me he delivered me from this, and I'm still going through this. Forget it. I ain't even going to try no more. Who do you think is telling you that? The enemy. God says, keep pressing in until you get your answer. Guess what? Because if, listen to this, saints. If God, when God says he's delivered you, if you believe him, he's delivered you. Now, if you go through it again, 
If you go through it again, you ask God, Lord, I'm so sorry, I repent of it. God says, okay, I'm going to watch over my word to perform it in your life. But to say, forget it, I give up, and I'm not going to press in anymore, God can't do anything. But God says, if you keep pressing in, I can keep helping you. Because if we learn from it, saints, if we learn from it, then God says that we're, we're more wiser if we learn from it. Amen? And so, so, saints, but today, that cycle is being destroyed. That season, that opportune time, that time of temptation, saints, those seasons of anger, those seasons of worry, those seasons of unclean thoughts, amen? And those seasons we were talking about, about flu and allergy, those seasons, that seasons of pain in your body. Oh, cold weather's coming. Oh, I guess I'm going to start feeling that now. No, you're not, because you are wonderfully made, God says. He made you wonderfully. A cycle is an event, is a struggle, and God is saying this fast is a now listen, this fast that God is, has put us on, those of you that raised your hand, those of you online that are, that are doing this fast with us, and those of you that aren't doing this fast, God's still going to do it for you because he loves you. Amen. His arm's not short that he cannot extend it because God knows we're just flesh. But those of you that are doing this fast, this is, God said this is a fast of purification. God's going to start making things so pure because how, how many of us know the, 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 the more, the pure, the God says even the pure, what the pure in heart will what see God see God we'll be able to see with the eyes of God and that which you thought was against your brother or sister is not it's the enemy and we know he's already been defeated we know that we already have the victory sometimes we get so hung up on that individual and what they've said to us that we forget who we're battling against and so sometimes God says it's just trivial stuff heaven and earth will pass away but not my word he goes you need to know right now that when somebody comes against you See, see, and let me, let me give you some revelation right now. When, when the enemy comes against you, we don't rejoice in how he's coming against us. But rejoice, saints, because you have the arsenal to rebuke that. That's why he comes against you. And God says, that temptation that comes against you, I'm going to make a way of escape. The way of escape is speaking the word of God. So when the enemy comes, they'll say, oh, my goodness, here he comes again. No, God's saying, no, he's trying to come, but you got within you the ability to cast him out. Because, because I know already God sees it before I see it. And I prayed that sometimes before when things would come, you get a letter or you hear a word or something, and it's not what you want to hear. Immediately, you want to get a bad attitude. You want, oh, my goodness. Oh my, why is God allowing this? Instead of saying, wait a minute, Lord, you knew about this. Before I say anything out of his lips of clay, Lord, you knew about this when I got it. And so what is it you want me to do? Because there will always be a way out. There will always be a way out. Say, say Lord, even now, I thank you that this is not who I am. I thank you, Lord, that this will not happen. And you said in your word that you have given within me the ability to change the atmosphere. Lord, what man has written out, you cancel out. I'm going to stand on what you said, Lord, that I'm wonderfully made. I'm going to stand on what you said, Lord, that you and your household are going to be saved. I'm going to stand on what you said, Lord, that I lack no good thing. And as you're saying that, guess what? The enemy comes and tells you that's not going to happen. Then you say, oh, yeah, now John's going to keep saying more scriptures and more scriptures and more scriptures. And then there's your way out of escape. But if, before you know it, you're not even feeling concerned about it because you know God's going to take care of it. Because before you knew it, God knew about it. And he already handled it because he said in his word, before you even pray, I'm already hearing you. And while you're praying, I'm already answered you. And so, but we got to do something. We're on this earth for a purpose, saints. We're the light of this world. Every time you, listen to this, every time you speak the word of God, and I'm not talking about be blessed, my, have a, have a good day. I'm talking about when you are ministering the word of God, every time you minister the word of God, you get brighter. You get brighter. That's why in these last days, the, 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 the spirit of God is going to be so mighty on you, people are going to see the light of Jesus on you. And they're, going to, and they're, and they're the ones that are going to be hurting. And the, the Holy Spirit's going to tell them, because the Holy Spirit can speak to people who aren't saved. He's going to tell them, see that light? Go over there. They'll tell you what to do. They may not see the person, they'll just see the light. And by the time they get to the light, they'll see the person. And they'll come to you, and you'll look at them, and they'll say, you'll say, what, what, what? And they say, I don't know. I was told to come to you because there's a light here. What can I do? And before you even know that, God will always tell you, I'm sending somebody to you because they need deliverance. I'm sending you somebody to you because they need to know that I love them. And say, sometimes you won't have to say nothing. You just have to be there. How many, remember what happened when they came to try to take Jesus? And they were coming to take Jesus, and they go, we're looking for Jesus. He goes, here I am. Boom, they fell down, got delivered and set free. 
And so I had it, and I'm sharing this with you right now because I didn't even remember this until right now. This is what God is about to do in our lives, those of us that are in this fast. I had a dream that, that I was standing there, and there was, a, there was a spirit that was not of God, and it was, a, a, it was a shape of a man. I don't know what the spirit was. I don't know what it was. But I walked up to it. As soon as I walked up to it, look at it. I didn't say anything, and it fell down. And God is saying, my people's presence, because it's going to be my presence in them. As soon as they show themselves, that spirit's going to, re- that spirit's going to get delivered. That person's going to get delivered. Now, you may say, oh, yeah, brother, that, no, that can't be the Lord. Well, it happened to Paul, it happened to Peter when they were walking. It said that Peter was walking. The shadow of Peter delivered the people. I don't remember them saying Peter said anything. They said he was walking. And Paul, they said all Paul did was put his hands on some handkerchiefs, on some aprons. They gave it to the people. The people didn't even hear Paul preach, and they got delivered. And so God, is, God can do that, and he can do even more. How about you just stand there? How about you go on the grocery line? You're standing in the grocery line. People start falling, speaking in tongues, getting delivered. And you didn't do anything. You just you, See, because God says, remember what he said to Jehoshaphat? You will not need to battle in this. He goes, this is not your battle, God says. You will not need to battle in this. He says, all you need to do is see the salvation. Stand still and see the salvation of God. Sometimes we're running around trying to do for God. God says, just stand still. Stand still. My anointing, my anointing doesn't come because you stretch your hands forth. My anointing comes because it's in you and, and it can't be stopped. And so we need to know this, saints, right now. God is moving so mightily. We're going to see signs and wonders and miracles. But God needs to start them through you because the world can't see them. They can't see them. But if you, if you walk in that love, God will use you. And that love means you don't care if they don't go to your church. You don't care if they're drug addicts. You don't care if they're, they're your in-laws. You don't care if they're from other nations serving other gods. You just want to be in their presence because it's the presence of God that's going to make them feel like something's going on here. I'm feeling a love that I never felt before. I'm feeling like I know this person and I don't know him. That's because, see, Jesus knew everybody. He created us. And so remember the scripture that says that that when Jesus ministered, they go, we've never heard it like this because it touched them. Because that was the same words that the great I am spoke when they were, when they became born, when they were, when they became, see, saints, when, see, you were, you were alive before you manifested here on this earth. Did you know that? You were already alive in heaven. God says, I'm going to bring you down here. I'm going to bring you down here and give you a family. And, I, and, and, and when my voice comes, you're going to hear my voice because it was my voice that created you. And so saints, we know who our creator is because he created us before we were. He goes, I knew you before you were born. And so if I knew you before you were born, that means you know my voice. And if you won't know my voice, and now I've come in the flesh and I dwell in you, the same voice in you is the same voice that created all things and has all authority. So what are you going to do? You're going to speak the word. Whatever you need to speak the word, a blessing or a, a word of deliverance, it's going to happen because God is going to do the work. That's what we need to know. God is going to do the work. I don't know where I am here. And so there is an anointing. That God is going to release today that will destroy that cycle of defeat. He's going to do it. It's not going to happen by might nor by power, but by his spirit. Psalms 80 verse 16 says, they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. You know what the countenance is? The face of God. They, They are rebuked just because the face of God is there. And where's the face of God? In you, saints. The Spirit of God is in you. Psalms 104 verse 7 says, At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder they hastened away. God is going to rebuke your enemies. He will speak to them. His voice will thunder. Ezekiel 25 17 says, I will rebuke. I will execute great vengeance on them with furious rebukes, God is saying. God will do the rebuking of our enemies. Jesus said, in my name, you will cast out demons. That word rebuke means to prevent. No more is this enemy going to come with these cycles. God says, look, I'm going to prevent him from coming. That word means, prevent means to oppose. How many times have we prayed, we oppose you? We oppose that in Jesus' name. That means to resist, to expose, and to attack. 
You're literally attacking the works of the enemy when you rebuke. So when you rebuke, he is being exposed, he is being resisted, and he is being attacked in Jesus' name. Mark 8, 31 says, The Son of Man must suffer many things, but be rejected and be killed. Remember when he talked about that in Mark chapter 8? And then Peter came up to him and said, Lord, no, we're not going to let you take them. He tried to stop Jesus. Almost sounds like an opportune time, huh? Like here comes the enemy again. He tried to do it in the wilderness, and now he's trying to do it through Peter, trying to get Jesus not to go to the cross where well, he's supposed to go to the cross. Because Jesus says, look, they're, I'm going to be betrayed. They're going to they're gonna kill me, and the third day I'm going to rise. And, and then Peter goes up and he goes, Lord, not so. And so in, in verse 32, Peter, Peter tried to stop him. But in verse 33, Jesus said that he rebuked Peter, saying, get Get thee behind me, Satan. He knew who it was that was bringing that temptation, that cycle he tried to start in the wilderness. He tried to bring it again and get him to, to not do what God wanted him to do. And so he said, get thee behind me, Satan, for you, are not, you do not have the mind of the things of God, but the things of men. This was a temptation from the enemy, an opportune time. But Jesus rebuked him. He prevented him. He resisted him. How? By speaking the word of God. This is your arsenal, saints. This is your arsenal. And I have come to find out that every time I read this, I may read the same scripture of, of, of power, the same scripture for healing, the same scripture for finances, the same scripture for family members being saved. But every so often when I'm reading this, God will give me new revelation. So don't say to yourself, say, well, I read that scripture already. I, that, I know what that means. No, because God's going to add to what you're already doing. And so when God says it's the word of God, this is your arsenal. This is your way of escape. And when you know this way of escape, and I'm not talking about escape, just whoa, just barely making it. I'm talking about escape that you're just going to walk right through it. Nothing's going to touch you. It happened with Jesus. They wanted to throw him over on that cliff. Remember? They took him to the top of the cliff. They were going to throw him out. He just, the Bible said he just walked right through him. Nobody could touch him. You can't. You cannot touch God. Come on. And guess where he dwells? In you. So when God says go, you go because nobody can touch you because God has already ordained it. And so we need to know that And as, as today as, as God's uh, psalmist was uh, worshiping God, he said that he, God is our Jehovah Jireh, a Jehovah Nishi. Amen. He's our victory. So today he's your Jehovah Nishi. He is your victory, saints. He's your victory. In other words, you already got the victory, saints, because he did it. So when, so when those cycles come to tempt you, declare what Jesus said. The cycle of anger, the cycle of fear, whatever it may be. In the name of Jesus, I resist you. You may say, yeah, brother, you know, I've heard that before. There was just the devil and he would flee and I've said it before. Say it again. Say it until it happens. Well, you know, I said it for a week and nothing happened. Then say it for two weeks. Say it till it happens because God's word will always come to pass. It's not him that's not fulfilling it. It's you not getting a mindset to believe he's saying it. Now, I know if I ask how many of you here are born again, everybody will raise their hand. And how do you know you're born again? Because the spirit of God is witnessing you that you're born again. If I was to say, brother, you're not born again. You would say, yes, you are. And I'll say, no, you're not. And you say, yes, you are. Because you know who you are. That's who you are. When you know the word of God has set you free, nobody can convince you it's not. And the only way you know that is by declaring it out of your mouth and believing it in your heart. That's how salvation came. That's how your confidence in God is going to come. If you're not speaking the word and the enemy comes at you, you're not going to have any place to stand. But the word of God is what's going to make a way of escape. And you may say, brother, I've been doing it. Keep doing it, saints. I'll tell you from my own experience. You keep doing it, it will shape you and mold you to be what you need to be. Because sometimes we need to be, re we need to, we need that, that potter to reshape this. You know, he needs to start shaping us to believe what he said. You know, sometimes we get not comfortable, but we get idea that this is how life should be. And God says, and that's not even close to how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to have more. You're supposed to be doing more. You're supposed to be experiencing more. And so let, let's let God in this fast be God. Let's let him do what he says he's going to do. God is purifying his people to walk in a cycle of victory. No more defeats, no more setbacks. His word is your victory, amen? Jude 1.9 says what? The Lord rebuke you. Not you. Not you rebuke them. The Lord rebuke them. Titus, turn to Titus chapter, tw chapter 2. Now listen to this, saints. Through this anointing, God said he was going to purify us, Amen. He was going to make us pure and holy. Titus 2, 
chapter, chapter Titus 2, chapter, whew, Titus chapter 2, verse 12, on to verse 15, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 14, who gave himself for us that we might that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works amen verse 15 speak these things exhort rebuke with authority saints rebuke with authority god is saying prevent expose Resist with authority, God is saying. Verse 15 says, rebuke with authority, expose, attack, resist the lies, deceptions of the enemy. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. And so I, earlier I was sharing with Apostle Michael, I got this vision when God was saying a cycle, how the enemy comes in cycles. And all of us are familiar with a carnival, right? When you're at a carnival, you see that big, is that what it's called, Ferris wheel that goes around? Or, yeah, Ferris wheel. And, and so that's how the enemy tries to come. He tries to come around. He tries to come around and make a way in. And so let's say that you're at the top. And, you're, and then here you're at the top. Here, here comes the enemy. He's, try, he's trying to go around. He's trying to come back as you come up to the top. He's trying to meet you there with that cycle and trying to make a way where there seems to be no way. But God is not going to allow him to come in, saints. God is going to quicken you. See, see God's going to quicken you. He rebuked him already. He destroyed him already. We reinforce what God already did. So the Holy Spirit, and I've, I've witnessed this many times, the Holy Spirit will remind you before it even happens. And sometimes when we get reminded, we just think about it, and then we walk away, and then maybe 10 minutes later, a day later, something happens. We go, Lord, what happened? He goes, I told you yesterday. You're supposed to pray. See, but we're in time, so we think, oh, you know, it's no big thing. I'm just thinking that. No, but when you're not in time, you're in both places. You're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And when God is talking to you and the Holy Spirit is talking to you, he's talking to you, it's now you pray. You're going to a wedding on Saturday, and he tells you on Tuesday, well, pray for everybody there that nobody gets sick and that everybody have a great time. You go, oh, that's, that's a good prayer. So you wait and you get there on Saturday, and everybody's sick. You say, Lord, why well, everybody's sick? I told you Monday to pray. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I mean, God will move. As much as you give God for you to pray for what's going on, he'll give you. If you're faithful and little, he'll give you more. And saints, you know, we're not perfect. We miss it. Come on. I mean, I don't know how many times I miss it, but I'm learning from God. I could be, I could, I could be preparing for service, right? I'm preparing for service, and I'm starting to get ready, and all of a sudden, uh, the Lord reminds me, uh, get this book, because there's somebody there I want you to give it to. And I'm tying my shoe while he's telling me this. I'm thinking, okay, after I tie my shoe, I'll... I'll get up and I'll go do it. And I forgot. So an up, another, another, another opportunity comes for God to minister to me. And the same thing's happening. You know, I'm combing my hair and everything. And he's saying, get that book. And I put everything down. I get that book. I put it in my briefcase. And I go back and do what I'm supposed to do. And see, saints, this is how God says, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We're not on our time. We're on his time. And he already did it. Now, you bring that, you bring it to church, and let's say that person never shows up. He said, well, Lord, you said, no, I just told you to do that. They didn't listen, but I told you to do that. See, we just need to do what we're supposed to do, amen? And so God wants you to do what you're supposed to do. I mean, we don't, we, I mean, the, the, I mean, if God, uh, uh, we're one, listen to this. God shared with me many years ago that there we're one body but many gifts, right? I mean, I mean, whatever you do, do it the best you can so that the whole body benefits from it. And so if God tells you to go do something, do it because the body will benefit from it. It's not just about you. Or what are you going to do for me, God? Or how am I going to benefit in this? The whole body's going to benefit. Jesus is the head. He's the one that makes us, he's the one that makes, he's in charge of everything. But we're the body. We're supposed to do what he said. So just do your part. That's all God asking. Just do your part. And God will be God. God is stopping the cycle. Jude 1 9, the Lord rebuke you. That word rebuke in that in that in that chapter means to demand or to charge you. And so God is saying, I charge the enemy, I demand the enemy to let go. 
he will not come near you anymore. Today, God is pulling down those strongholds, the cycles of defeat, those occurrences, those struggles. God wants you to know that you will live soberly, righteously, and godly, and he has redeemed you and has purified you unto himself. No more, no more shackles, no more chains. You're free, saints, in Jesus' name. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested to destroy the works of the devil, and he did. Thank you, Jesus. You have come to his, you have come to his glorious light. No more darkness, no more defeat, saints. Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has come and it's inside of you. The hope of glory. Cycles have been extracted and destroyed. Walk and talk in the liberty of Christ. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Come on now, we've heard these scriptures before. But God is looking. God says, I'm speaking them to you right now because I'm taking, you're allowing me to take full charge now. God has said, and it cannot be reversed, God said. God has said it, and it cannot be reversed. A command blessing is upon you forever. I don't care what this world is saying. There's not enough money going around. There's not enough supplies going around. God says, look, you, you can say, Lord, you already said it, and it can't be reversed. A man can't reverse what you say. You said, I've been commanded to be blessed my whole life. So I'm commanded to be blessed. Everything I need is going to be given to me by you, God, because you're the one that supplies money. You are my provider. Amen, Joel. Jaira, my provider. Today, today your victory is here. Reach out, take it, receive it, and believe it. My victory, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My victory belongs to you, God is saying. Now we know what Jesus said. We always triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen. No more conflicts, no more episodes. You, you have my mind, God is saying. You have my thought. You have my spirit in you. The spirit of peace. The spirit of joy. The spirit of faith. The spirit of trust. The spirit of hope. I, the Lord, your God, command over you a, to live a cycle of victory. So God is already saying it. Whose report are you going to believe when you leave here? That God has given you a cycle of victory or that things are going to keep happening? Well, I choose to say I'm going to receive a, I receive a cycle of victory. Victory is to receive everything God has for us. Every step you take will be a step of victory. Every thought will be pure, holy, because I, you are holy. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the anointing of purification that God has for you, saints. He's doing the purifying He's making a way where there seems to be no way. And whatever that cycle would be, and we all have our personal cycles, God is saying to you right now, I'm rebuking it. I'm demanding it to go. I'm making a way where there seems to be no way. The anointing of God breaks every yoke. Amen, saints? So God wants you to know that you're not going to have the victory, saints. Sorry to say, you're not going to. You already got it. You already, when Jesus said it was finished, you already got it. He made a way where there seems to be no way. All we have to do is receive it. And I know by the Spirit of God that he has quickened within you that you shall not be defeated anymore. You shall walk in the victory that he's given you because he said he's given you his spirit, his victory, his trust, his faith, his hope. So today, in Jesus' name, you walk in that victory. Amen. The victory belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so praise the Lord. I want to I want to I want to give a blessing out to my brothers and sisters that are online. Thank you, Jesus. What an honor. And I consider it an honor, my brothers and sisters, to be able to speak the word of God and give it to you. And knowing that you receive it, knowing that God is doing a work in your life. God will never give a word without him already quickening you that he's going to give that kind of word because he is, he's always on time. Amen. And so in the name of Jesus, you know, I release the blessings of God upon you. And, and if, if God puts it on your heart, my brothers and sisters online, to give, you go to our website, encountergenesis.slash tithe, and give. And I know God will bless you because that's the kind of God he is. Let's, 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 let's start a new cycle, a cycle that is a continued cycle of blessings, a cycle of blessings, a cycle of giving, a cycle of victory. No more defeats. 
only victory. Amen. So the Lord bless you, my brothers and sisters online. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you the victory that already belongs to you in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen.